Hello, Mark Brett Larson here for the Green Catcher Podcast. Thanks for joining us. Today, my guest is Tammy Ann Stroshak. How are you doing, Tammy? Good. How are you? I'm doing great. It's a warm day, but it's good. It's a good start to the week. So, yes. so Tammy, where are you located at? I'm in beautiful upstate New York um, and okay. Sullivan County. I'm near the original site of Woodstock. It's a very tour, oh, really? yeah, very tourist area, but I love it in the winter because everyone leaves. <laughs> oh, is that <laughs> so? It gets okay. I can see that. That'd be kind of neat. Mm -hmm. So, um, so are you? Is that where you grew up? No, I grew up coming up here. We were called the Borscht Belt, and my grandparents used to go to Kutcher's and I can't think of the other hotel. You must the Grossinger's. At, for the Jewish okay. holidays, and there was a summer community in this town that I went as a little girl, and I used to see this house and say, "Oh, I'd love to live in this house." And the former, the uh -huh. former owner's name is Mary Martin. Her picture is in the town hall. She was an wow. artist and a teacher, and unfortunately, she died with no relatives. But I inherited oh. all her things. The house was junked up. It still needs work. We are. But it has character. And it used to be a boarding house as well. I have all her pictures of okay. her skating on the lake. It, it, women wore dresses back then in the winter. They were skating That's in neat. their dresses. And it's it just, yeah, sense. really yeah. good, good vibes. Yeah, no, that's awesome. So, so. What do you do where you're living? What do I do? Oh my goodness. Well, just keeping, you, don't yeah, do. <laughs> you know, keeping uh, an old house running and, and I live across from a lake. Um, I swim around it in the summer. I run, nice. I swim. I also, I'm a Reiki healer. Um, there's just so many things that I do. And then I also go back and forth to Pennsylvania to where my boyfriend is. So, uh, you know, garden, um, you know, we, it's Neat. just a lot, a that. lot. I'd love to show you my flowers, but I'm afraid to move this. No, that is neat. <laughs> so, so how far is it to Pennsylvania? Is that quite a drive? No, I'm on the border. I'm like 12 minutes from the Delaware. Oh, my God. It's so oh. beautiful. You hear the rushing of the... The um, the river, we go to Skinner's Falls where there's rapids. It's just such a beautiful area. Unfortunately, you cannot get contractors to show up. And when they do, they charge an exorbitant amount. Well, that's mm -hmm. on a lot of levels. That's really too bad. Yeah. So, um, yeah, it seems like it's getting that way even here, too, out in central Nebraska. I mean, it's... It, it's just not that many people, so they you know they stick with the cities and stuff like that. So um, or they. So have you ever been? To Nebraska? Have you been? To Nebraska? No, I want. I would love to visit Nebraska. <laughs> it, it it sounds like it would be different. It, well, it depends on what part of Nebraska. It sounds like it'd be different. So mm -hmm. um, so I mean, this house. How old is your house? Over a hundred years old. I'm originally from Jersey, so we okay. used to come up summers and stay in a bungalow colony. The bungalow colony went co-op, and we own a bungalow in there now, and it's a, a summer community. I was a lifeguard there for year, many years, and I raised my kids. Nice. I had three little kids running around while I was a lifeguard. It's a safe community. I'd bring them lunch. Oh, yeah. yeah. So I That's – yeah. So what was great was when I moved up here, all the locals knew me, and I had friends. I had girlfriends from summers. I had boyfriends. I had – people and I wasn't treated like an outsider. If you're an outsider, they can treat you really bad. I mean, they could have fled this house. It was like almost condemned. They left me alone. <laughs> that is good. So, so what's winter like there? I mean, are you get snowed in a lot? No, or? we used to. One time, I wish, one time my car was covered in snow and I dug it out. It was like an igloo. Uh -huh. And it hasn't uh -huh. snowed that much. I think everywhere. It hasn't been snowing, and it's. I don't think it's global warming. What I've heard is happening. It's all the cell towers and all the EMFs. It's overheating the planet, um, and it's also dehydrating the planet as well. So 
it's it's really bad everywhere it's warming up it's just, yeah. yeah there's a lot of things that um and those emfs from the cell phone towers are not good for anything no, no I, I don't think no and i bought an emf case um it's supposed to repel it's made with crystals and moisture okay. and i don't take my phone to bed with me at all and i sleep with one of the emf it's like uh it's not tinfoil, not at all, but it's small and it's easy. And I put it under uh -huh. my pillow and they say it repels all the negative eons and everything. And I, I feel better since I've been doing it. That's yeah. Good. That's always good. So, so I was on your podcast not too long ago and we talked about the, the 50 plus community. Yeah. How, how, how did you get, how, how did that come about? It came about, um, I wanted to do ageless, the 50 plus community. I'm 50 plus, and I felt discriminated against. I tried to mm -hmm. go on Instagram and create a little following. I know algorithms. I know it's all about that. So I would follow people. I spent like a half hour mornings, and it was annoying. Okay. And my boyfriend would be like, you're always on the phone. No, I was on the phone. I was trying to create algorithms. I was trying to create uh -huh. a following for, oh, I get yeah, for ageless. And what happened was there's women following women, and I would get, like, seven likes, no matter what I did. And I would see the 30-year-olds getting, like, 7,000, 70,000. Right. I'm like, I, I was like, this is not good. So I did an experiment. I saw a blue flower company get, like, 700,000 likes. So I put myself oh, as an exotic blue flower, and I got – much uh -huh. more likes than my age list with no algorithms. So it proved to me, mm -hmm. yeah, it proved to me that there is definitely ageism. So I wanted to create a beautiful, safe space for us where we can feel safe and um, also get information for our age group that isn't out there. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, I agree. And, um, yeah, people just, well, we, we talked about it on your podcast, how people just kind of dismiss you when you get to a certain age. You know, you're old. Even if you really are old, they just figure that you're going to retire or, you know, you can't do this anymore. And, right. And, and, yeah, some people believe that because they, and some people truly are not doing well. <laughs> but a lot of them don't feel like, you know, it's just like I'm getting to this age. So they kind of, well, retirement, they just like start to die, you know, because the, the, they're, Usually the the work has been their identity, and they don't know what to do, so they just kind of, um, well, I'm old, I'll just, you know, if I'm around for the grandkids, that's good, but I'm, you know, I'm about to the end of my life. And they, a lot of times, give up. Mm. And it's like, you know, and I, I tell my wife this all the time, it's like, what if the retirement age was 85? Right. You know, then at 65, you would think you were just still middle-aged. Exactly. And I, you know, you just. Like I say, we are not young, we are not old, we are the tweeners, we are in between. Yes. And we are so powerful with wealths of knowledge. The people that I've had on have been amazing. I've had a, a holistic doctor on who cures you with vitamins. Wow. She implements little what? by little changes and she intuitively can go in and scan your body. And there's, oh. there's healers that do that. And she wants to change the health revolution. She's getting um, healers to sign up, but we all know how corrupt the medical establishment is. And, yes, and when you say you have something, it's just a name. You you can heal yourself. So there's yeah. a may I always have people on that can help. And there's a, yeah, because yeah, at our age, we think that maybe there's not help. Maybe we're stuck in uh oh we should know now because we've been this age but no yeah yeah, yeah. we we yeah. don't because we haven't had the wealth of knowledge back then that we have now yeah mm -hmm. no and that's I, I love that because um well and so many people take just a pill you know they just oh, take a pill goodness. and it's just like and it's not lack of those just watch tv for half an hour. Mm -hmm. i mean it's pretty much all drug pushing you ask me and it's just like why would you want to take a pill when all these side effects and some of them are death which is a pretty bad side effect um it's just like but i know people that are 
much older than I am, they're taking like 26, maybe more than that pills a day. And it's like, how the interaction, how could they ever, there'd be so many interactions. It's but so they, they bad. Just, yeah, them. it's so bad because, like you said, death, uh, suicidal thoughts, what else, nausea, cancer, <laughs> the side effects cause no. yes. And I know firsthand my dad was bipolar and manic, so he had to get shock treatments. Um, so back in the day, and then he would, he was on lithium, at which – Actually, there's a crystal, a real rock that you can put in your water that has the same effect as uh, lithium. And I can't think of the name. <laughs> but anyway, yeah. Um, oh, and it's one of my favorites, too, because I work with crystals and everything. But once you start get off lithium, you go even crazier. You think you're okay, and you go off it. So, at the, yeah, at the end, his anti-psychotic meds made him psychotic. He thought the FBI was after him, the police was after him. Uh, yeah, no. it was so sad. He would have lived, he was healthy because he was a health guru. He believed in glutathione, he believed in niacin, he took some, but his mind went. So, yeah, no. the effects of med. I don't take anything. Me mm -hmm. either. No, and that which way it's going to stick yes. to. Now, they, well, you go to the doctor and that's the first thing they want to do is start throwing stuff like that. It's like, let's just figure out what the real cause is rather than right. um, something that's probably going to be worse. Yes, so, you have um, to heal from the root cause. They don't, they just heal the symptom. Yep. So. Yep, exactly. Mm -hmm. so, so, Tammy, have you, when you were younger, were, did you have this kind of mindset then? Um, We were... Our family was dysfunctional, but we were, like, the first to be healthy. My dad was, like, so ahead of his curve. He used to be, gosh, oranges. They're full of pesticides. Back in the day, he knew. Uh, he knew what was going on. And I was always like this because we we were taught to be tough. Um, and we were <laughs> the more germs, the better. I know people that are germaphobic. But I don't get sick. Yes. It's so, yeah. yeah mm -hmm. So. No, yeah, some people, they just, well, and when I was younger, I'm, of course, played in the dirt and all yes. that stuff. You know, I did all this. And it's just like, now they want to be super clean. And it's just like, uh, let's let them be kids. Right. Your, your uh, body needs the germs and it needs to build up the antibodies to fight off. So if you're if yes. you're always um, too clean, you're you're just gonna really not have what you need to fight off germs. And especially, she told me that if you take antibiotics or you've ever taken them, your gut is ruined. <laughs> really? I, wow. Yeah, and I think we've all been on antibiotics. So yeah. mm -hmm. that's crazy. Mm -hmm. So um, for what you're doing, do you go out and speak in public? Uh, no, I haven't had the opportunity, but I would love to, uh, you know, I, I don't have fear of public speaking. That's one thing I don't have. That's good. I'm kind of better at that, but it still intimidates me. Even if I tell my brain, you know, it's like, no, this is fine. Basically, it's no different than I'm doing right. here, but my, my mind, or even if I'm doing the podcast live, it's just like, I don't know. Sometimes it's interesting what your brain does, yeah. so, but... I used to be fearful, but I had my own Facebook show. I used to read tarot cards. So I okay, used to be, really? yes, and I have about 50 Oracle card decks. I'm a reader. So I used to be so scared to go live. I used to shake, and I read for a year, and it took the fear away. So I trained myself before I did podcasts without knowing I was training to do it. That is, yeah. that is really neat. So, so do you have a podcast now? Just Ageless, the 50 plus. I might, okay. since it is just audio, not video, I might now take a break. And then I hope you hear that. That was, I hope you didn't hear that. That was like a tractor trailer. Um, mm -hmm. I might take a break in November and then revamp and start doing video. And yeah, okay. because okay. video is more effective. 
and audio. Okay. Mm -hmm. So how long have you had Ageless, that podcast? Excuse me? How long? How, how long have you had your Ageless podcast? I just started in April. Um, oh, yeah. Recently? Yes, I just started. And I had so many people that wanted to do it. I'm booked till November. Um, nice. Yeah, booked through November. And then I'm going to take that a break cool. and revamp it and redo it. And I have a, I have a sponsor, um, not a sponsor. I have a mentor who's helping me and we're, we're going to do things in a more, uh, maybe a little more professional, but I yeah. don't want to be uh, ridiculously. I like just, you know, being organic, maybe just doing yep, video. Yeah. I, just, mm -hmm. I like, I like listening, watching that type of podcast too. So yeah. It's just, um. Uh, so I gotta ask you, the Being the Dream Catcher podcast. What was your, what were your dreams when you were growing up? What did you wanna, when you grew up, you wanted to be? Well, my dream growing up, I really didn't have one. I was very, our family was so dysfunctional. I just was surviving, and that's what made me psychic. Wow. Um, I had a very bad eating disorder. My mom used to tell me I was fat when I, I don't want to be negative when I was little. So. And then my parents mm -hmm. had issues because he was mentally ill and bipolar, but he was like a genius. And she was miserable because of his illness. And she took it out on me. And so at 11 years old, I was thrust into their marriage. And I was, I, yeah, mm -hmm. I, it became like, well, she became jealous of me. It was very, and I became ill. I was very ill throughout my teenage years. So rebuilding wow. myself was, now is and was a priority to become happy, mm -hmm. healthy, whole, learn to not hurt myself, learn to love myself. And that's what I want to give other women. That is my goal. So I will be coaching. That is my goal to help with. Because at this age, we have not healed. A lot of us carry unhealed trauma from true. the past. And I would love to help people that have had addiction issues, like eating disorders and OCD. And I also drank mm -hmm. along with it because that comes along with it usually. So when I stopped the eating disorder, I still drank. And then okay. um, what happened was my son came back from China. Uh, he's in China now. He's studying. And he got sidelined here two years or three because of COVID. And uh -huh. He took me in the backyard where we were, and he prayed on me. He said, God, please, please take the drinking from her. And something wow. came over me. I, I got chills, and, I, and it lifted. Like, I could see it lift. And I stopped drinking. Uh -huh. Forty years of vodka. I stopped drinking. I didn't have... Um, any type of physical symptoms or anything. And I think, I think I didn't go through withdrawals because I'm an athlete. So I might have been sweating out the vodka, or maybe because God was with me. I mean, I, I right, hear right. that's dangerous to do, but I was fine. I couldn't sleep for a while after maybe eight okay. months, but I knock out now. Like, so that passes everyone who is afraid of that. It passes, and I, I would go in the backyard, and I'd say, Andrew, Andrew, how did this happen? I tried for years, and I would try and then slip back. Everyone knows the slip back. You know, you start you oh, start yeah. buying the liquor again. I'm hiding bottles in my car. I mean, I only drank at night, as the addicts say, only. But yeah, <laughs> it was yeah. at night. And so during the day, I was basically straight. And... I would have to hide the bottles on the way to my boyfriend's, go to a garbage and throw them out. And then you're going in the liquor store, hiding it into your bag when you're bringing it in, making sure you don't hear the sloshing. And all of that yep. left, it is such so nice to be unburdened from that. And yeah. I would say, Andrew, how did this happen? And he said, praise Jesus. And I didn't know about Jesus yep. or anything. I was Jewish. And okay. he... It fell on me again, the feeling like I, I felt like crying and I had chills and it was just the most yeah. amazing thing. And ever since then, I've been fine and I've 
I, and I'm studying the Bible with a girl from Ukraine. She, oh, yes, wow. he set me up with her. I mean, I went to church. He did Bible study uh -huh. with me, and I started getting clear. I had no prior knowledge of any religion, so I was a clear book. So it was very easy okay. to work with me, except I couldn't figure out what Jesus meant. I couldn't figure out he was God, uh, you know. Okay. But so he left, and I slacked, and I thought the church that he took me to was on, on the Delaware at Cute Point Church. The people were farmers. They were the sweetest people I've ever met. And mm -hmm. I stopped going, So and I stopped understanding the Bible without – just reading it, I just couldn't. And you, could, they say, ask God. But I could ask God. I couldn't understand it. So he set me up with the sweetest person from Ukraine. And we do Bible study once a week. And it's she's just her little way of doing it. I'm understanding it. It was amazing. So, um, yeah. yeah. I, I mean, that's especially when you find the right person. Because it's like learning anything and when you just that right person yeah it just becomes clearer, more clear mm -hmm. and uh, now i mean gosh you've been through so many things so down the road i mean like a couple of years what would you like to be having going on in your life then well i'm starting my website we're working on it and i'm going to be giving courses i'm going to be help healing other women that have been in the same situation as me i know card reading is looked down upon you know, if it's not, if you're religious, but I love, I love doing card reading. I am psychic. Right, right. I know that sounds like I'll get a message, pull a card, and then I'll go off into what I get for you intuitively. I don't just go by the card. I love doing that. But my main, my main ambition is to help heal and heal your heart space. I'm a Reiki healer. Clear chakras, I do that as well. That's what I'm working on. And my website, once it's up, I have a free heart healing video I've done for everyone. It's called okay. Ageless Soul Tribe. Really? Yeah. So it's a beautiful, I did it in the backyard, and it's about love and how you can love yourself unconditionally. Give love because yes. everything starts with the heart. It does. Amen. Mm -hmm. I definitely so. I mean, I mean, how did you learn how to do Reiki and all and and those uh, things? Or I even read cards. How do you learn to do? That? I just knew, like when I was little, I saw fairies. When a lot of people who have been through abuse are psychic, you use your wits to live. Because I was Thanks. neglected, some terrible things happened to me. I won't say, but I was just let outside, and I, you know. So you learn to live mm -hmm. by your wits and you get psychic. You just, I can't explain it. So I was, I was always that way. And at like in my twenties, I just started reading cards, but so okay. yeah. And then the Reiki healing came from all the suffering. There's only so much self-hatred and suffering a person can withstand. So I was got Great. the message, just take it all, let it come out of your hands like gold, like beautiful gold, like the alchemist, and heal others. And then I took the Reiki courses, and that's when I got that message, yeah. that's when I took the courses. And I love healing nice. because when you go over a person and you scan them, You'll say, where are your mm -hmm. hands? And they'll say, oh, they're on my leg or, oh, they're on my arm. Meanwhile, your hands are nowhere near that. <laughs> yeah. That's interesting. Yeah. Really? Mm -hmm. No, I mean, this, there's so much to this. I mean, it just, um, I, 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 do, you, I, do you do a YouTube channel? No, or will you be doing um, I'm, I just started the YouTube. I'm so technically bad. But we uploaded the heart healing video to YouTube, and people with a link that subscribe will be able to get it. Um, so, yes, I will be doing the YouTube and things like that. And No, yeah. I mean, so how many, with what you do? Do you work at a, with a certain amount of people? Or do you, I mean, how many people do you work with at a time? Well, I had the Reiki healing. I stopped because I started getting men 
that might have had the wrong idea, that never heard of bright healing, thought they were just coming here. So I, I had a really bad experience, um, you know, but I will do Reiki healing online. You can heal from online. And okay. I am just starting to set up all of this because in person, upstate, I had guys coming from New Jersey. I mean, I'm ageless. I'm oh, wow. old. and Not old, old, but I'm age- But they expected something else. And you weren't getting a massage with a happy ending. You were getting a Reiki treatment. Luckily, my son was always home, so I wasn't, yeah. Yes. But I got so discouraged, and I said, I'm just, yeah. Wow. Mm-hmm. People, <laughs> you want to help them, but sometimes. Yeah. Oh, my mm-hmm. so, so do you have any siblings? Yes, I have two brothers, and. So are they are they are they into this too? No, one lives in New Jersey. They both live in New Jersey, far apart. And my brother, my one brother, comes up and stays in the bungalow. So I see him and his wife all summer. So yes. Well, that's yeah, neat. yeah. That is really mm-hmm. neat. But since your son is in China, what is he doing in China? Well, when he was young, when he got out of the army, he went to Brooklyn College, and the professor was oh. Chinese, and he had a hard time because I was broke with two younger kids, and you know, so he had a hard time uh, because he couldn't. They wanted him to prove where he lived and all of this getting in, but he did. He's an iron will right. guy. And the professor took him to China, and that was it. He became obsessed with China. He studied it. He knows the language. He went there, and he was the first American valedictorian to graduate Nanjing University. He was on the news. Wow. So he studied, came home, studied, came home. He got a scholarship. Um, He's in Hafa. He went back to get his master's. That's the highest. And the mm-hmm. pollution is so bad, he got really ill, and he can't finish. He has a he has a permanent cough, and, yeah, now, and it's really bad. So, you know, this thing about global warming, you have to clean up the other countries. China, where he is, mm-hmm. he's, he said Hafa is horrible. He was sick for a lot of the semester. So he's going... Somewhere I don't know where he's going, but that's true. Yeah. So where would he? When he got, where would he like to settle back in the United States or? I don't think he's he... happy with the United States. He cannot stand the politics. So I don't. I'm. Yeah. So yeah. he is not coming back. Um, I don't know where he's going, and he's the type that won't tell me. So I'll be the only. But like he got sick and he didn't um, get back to me, and I'm like. Andrew, where are you? I'm the only mother that doesn't yeah. even know where my son is. I'm thinking I'm going to have to fly to Haf- Hafa and find him. Yeah, right, what yeah. am I? I said, can you tell me the name of your college? He's so secretive. He's always been that way. So he's so funny. But I don't know where he's going to be. And my Ukrainian Bible study woman, who I love, she's his age. And that's how he hooked me up with her. She's finding out. Okay. She'll find out for me. <laughs> That's good. Mm-hmm. That's very good. So, so, Tammy, people that want to work with you, I mean, how do they get a hold of you? They can get me on Facebook, Tammy Ann Strosha, or they can go to my Gmail, Tammy6598 at gmail.com. And, okay. yeah, my website will be up and running. I'll be offering a lot of really nice things once it's up but you know it's a work in progress if you don't have one thing narrowed down like i i want to do this i want to do that i have to narrow down mm-hmm. but i will be coaching women and doing courses for for heart healing from unhealed trauma and hopefully i can help very nice so so um and tammy unless there's something else you'd like the audience to know um i'll end the podcast there and if there's anything else, um, this is your time. Otherwise, we'll just we'll just end. Just you can listen to my podcast, Ageless, the fifty plus community. You have to put after it. 
because you won't find it with just Ageless. It's on Apple, Spotify, Buzzsprout. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yes. Awesome. So, well, Tammy, thanks for being my guest on the Dreamcatcher podcast. Um, I always enjoy talking to you. Yeah. Um, I look forward to look for look forward to keeping in touch and seeing how your journey continues yes. here. So um, I'm ageless. You, you're, it's never too you're never too old to start. Just because you're not in your forties or you might be fifties and plus and you're just starting, keep it going. Once you get that little spark, yes. keep going. Keep plugging ahead. Amen. There's people at my age that are have these professional everything. I am just well, I'm not really just beginning, but I'm just beginning professionally. <laughs> yeah, that's great wisdom. It's great advice. It, um, it's a great way to end the podcast, yeah. too. So, well, uh, um, Tammy, thank you. And um, enjoy the rest of your day. And uh, we'll be talking soon. Okay, you too.